Oyster Quopa. The Nasa Scheiben. Lagar S U H. Hello everybody, welcome to Mike's Mike. My name is Factually and Contractually Mike. I am wearing a suit because we are doing another film review and this time I'm talking about simply the greatest movie ever made. And that is of course, Hunger Games Catching Fire. Ladies and gentlemen, her. Remember who the real enemy is. Maybe was too ahead of its time for certain people. I have a feeling that the film Dude Bros are gonna come for me. Please, please, I can't mentally handle it right now. Also, I have asteroid nails. I forgot to show you that. Yeah, I was thinking about the dinosaurs and how they got wiped out by an asteroid, so I thought I'd commemorate that. Photo bombing a selfie that is so early 2014. Shout out to the dinosaurs. Yeah, if you haven't watched my first Hunger Games video, make sure you go and do that. On said train, Katniss sees a chandelier for the first time and has a panic attack. Oh my God, what is that? Crusty, 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 crusty man. Basic summary of the first Hunger Games movie is that Katniss was girl bossy on extreme mode. Katniss the Everdeen. Hunger <laughs> the Games. So the movie starts and Katniss is controversially at the lake. She's hunting, very similar to the start of the first Hunger Games movie, and Gale's there too. Now, controversially, I was Team Gale at this point on the first watch. Now, I know what ends up happening. Oh, she passed away? Oh. Mm. All right. But at this point, you have to admit, Gale was outselling Peter. Peter. Because Peter... What the fuck was that? Because Peter is just... What's he doing besides giving bread? You know? But not even the bread. Just, like, literal bread. I'm already sidetracked. Katniss is giving Christian girl autumn in these first outfits of the movie. Now because Swagness and Breadman won the 74th Hunger Games, they have to do like a winner's tour, which involves going on this train and going around to all the districts and having a little speech. Since it is the start of the movie, we are reintroducing these characters that you might've forgot what their main thing is. So we see Hamish and he's drinking because that's his thing. And Peter comes into the house holding bread because that's his thing. Katniss goes home and guess who's in her house? It is evil um, capitalist dictator Dumbledore, President Snow. He's there to talk to Swagness about the verification of her Hunger Games in which she and Peter threatened to s by having the poison berries. So they're all like, absolutely not. And they threatened to KMS with the poison berries, like nom 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 nom, eat it up. Now because that happened on live TV and everyone was watching in the districts, those people have decided to basically make Facebook groups called Uprising and Rebellion. And he basically threatens Katniss and says, unless you convince everyone that the verification was out of love and not rebellion, I will K-word everyone you love. Um, get a good lawyer. Time for some more character reintroductions. We get the girl boss to end all girl bosses, Effie. And we also get Sinner. Now, I actually forgot that Sinner was still alive, although he won't be for much longer. Ah. That's really not a tongue out moment, but whatever. Guys, does anyone in this universe have a phone? I can't remember if I spoke about this in the first video, but I'm just confused because I have so much technology that are live streaming shit on the news, but no one has a phone. It's kind of ideal because you get all the cool shit about technology, but you don't have to deal with social media, but then I wouldn't have a job. So they get on the train to do the victory tour and it's packed. It's like a district a day. It's kind of similar to Katy Perry's Teenage Dream World tour in which she did like a show a night for fucking seven years. On the train, Katniss and Peter are talking about how they need to know more about each other to convince everyone that they're in a relationship. So she's like, what's your favorite color? And he says, orange. <laughs> Orange. Hey bitch, love the titties, what? Are there actually people whose favorite color is orange? Um, get a good lawyer. So the first district that they go to outside of their own is District 11, which is the district that Rue was from, and I'm still not over that. They did Rue so freaking dirty. As Taylor said in Bad Blood, you forgive, you forget, but you never let it go. <laughs> are you, are you? Coming to the tree. Yeah. Strung up a man. They said who murdered three. Yeah. A rubbish truck right now. Um, get a good lawyer. No one wants to see a girl boss win, but we will win anyway. And you know what? Katniss proved that girl bosses can win. I'm doing this for Katniss. I remember I used to do this and like it looks floppy and that was just so shocking to me. Now remember famously when Katniss and Rue were friends and they were trying to like get rid of everyone else in the arena, they came up with that bird thing where they were like, huh, 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 huh. the people of District 11 start doing that and then the police are like absolutely fucking not and they start harassing everyone and they even shoot this old man and Katniss is like, 
What was that? Now, because of that event, Katniss is like, well, I'm gonna serve crickets because I don't want more people to get hurt and have little uprising moments. So she's just serving and the people are all like, hmm, that's weird. I am kind of skipping this start bit because I need to get to the best part of the best movie ever. And of course I'm referring to the third quarter quell. But they have like a little presidential party at the presidential palace with the president and we meet Plutarch Heavensby, some looks were served, it is the capital after all. President Snow coughs up some blood into a champagne glass and I'm like, am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Cause I fucking don't. Blah, 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 evil commander comes to district 12, Gale like, gets whipped and he's bleeding and shit. I don't know, Gale behavior. She interfered with the peacekeeper. <clears throat> she interfered with the peacekeeper. Ooh, and this is tense. This part of the movie is tense because you know, he nearly shoots Katniss in the face on live TV and Hamish is like, bestie babe, you don't want to do that because everyone at home is going to be like, mm, maybe I will rebel. I vividly remember this part of my first watch of this movie. It's at 44:45, great Ariana Grande song. And Snow says, her species is dangerous. And he's talking about the victors. What the fuck is it gonna take to get rid of this bitch? And I started getting super excited. So I'm like, now hold on. Is this Survivor All-Stars? He's basically saying that if she gets bold and she's like, eh, I don't know if I love the rules. I am swagness. I do whatever I want. Then the other victors are gonna be like, well, I could also do whatever I want. And this is where President Snow Bestie Snowsty announces the third quarter quell. Now a quarter quell happens every 25 years and this is the 75th Hunger Games and they're gonna do something special. The male and female tributes are to be reaped from the existing pool of winners. I collapsed because that is Survivor All-Stars and it's also Survivor Blood vs. Water. This concept is solid. I would say Snowsty really snapped on this one. You're not gonna get the song the first time you hear it. After the second and third time, you're gonna be like, whoa, what is this? I'm not even gonna lie to you right now. If I was a citizen of Pan Am and he announced that shit, I'd be like, no, no, please don't do that. That's so evil. Katniss the Everdeen has realized, oh shit, yup, that's me. So then during the reaping, you know, Effie's there and she's got the butterfly outfit. She really ate that one up. We need to get our girl Effie to the Met Gala. She picks out the name and it's Swagness cause she's the only one available. And then it's between Hamish and Peter and they call Haymitch and Peter's like, I volunteer as tribute. And it's kind of like, that's kind of been done. At this point in the movie, we get introduced to all the cast members, you know, the cast of the 75th Hunger Games. We have Gloss and Kashmir, Brutus and Anabaria, and she's the bestie with the like pointed sharp teeth. And you know, I support her on her journey. Then we have Wyrus and Beatty, Finnick O'Dare. Finnick O'Dare. Hey bitch, love the titties, what? We don't speak just fuck twice a week. Good thing we're allies, right? <laughs> The finickification. Finnick O'Darism. I'm a finicator. Do I want a sugar cube? Yes. Mags, who volunteered for Annie Cresta, Morphling and Blight, Joanna Mason. Oh, she is. Oh, she kind of outsold Girlboss Katniss now that I think about it. I think Katniss has Girlboss and Gatekeep, but I think Joanna has Girlboss, Gatekeep, and Gaslight. There's a scene where Katniss and Finnick are talking about money. I haven't dealt in anything as common as money in years. I don't need the money. She feeds me. Get a Similarly to the first Hunger Games movie, there's a moment where they kind of go out in their pairs and everyone gets to see the tributes in like kind of like a red carpet and Katniss is serving, whoa, 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 let's light it up. I'm gonna tell you right now. When I see you, you getting lit up, bitch. It ain't no world. We get this elevator scene with Hamish, Katniss, Peter, and Joanna Mason. And she just full on like takes the dress off and she's just fully naked in the elevator. Joanna has short hair, but in this elevator scene, she's got like really long hair and a ponytail. And you know what I'm going to say. Right, I got my half up, half down. Did it give Ariane? Then they all have to talk to this guy. Now, this is Frankie Grande. You can't tell me that that is not Frankie Grande. Katniss comes out in a wedding dress and it like lights up and turns into a bird, Flo Millie shit. Now in his interview, Peter comes out swinging cause he says, if it weren't for the baby, implying that Katniss is pregnant, everyone's like, <gasps> we don't even let pregnant women on planes and we're gonna let this pregnant lady into the Hunger Games arena. Next thing I wrote here is OMG, they did Zoe Kravitz's dad so dirty. And this is the scene where Sinner and Katniss are talking before she gets in the test tube to go up to the arena. So it's kind of like, okay, let me go in this test tube to die. And then her bestie gets beat up and Kay worded right in front of her. President Snow, when I see you in the street. Um, get a good lawyer. Next, I've written in all caps, best scene. And I also wrote, this is how you do sequels. 
Katniss comes out of the tube and she's in the water. And she looks around and she's like, whoa, whoa, because it's all glary. Now remember, this was my favorite scene from the first Hunger Games movie. And they've just done it so much better this time. She looks around and it's like a watery arena with like rocky outcrops coming up in lines towards the center with tropical vibes outside the water, giving very much white lotus. The voiceovers are all like, let the games begin. And they all like run towards the center and Katniss is looking around and everyone's a little bit shit. And she's like, Hmm. And this little alliance starts to form and it's Swagness, Breadman, Finnick, and Mags. Some would say this is the ideal friendship group. You have the mum friend, you have the hot friend, you have the bread friend, and you have the girl boss friend. Which one are you? Hey bestie. Guys, these pigeons are obsessed with me. Next thing you know, they're running through the forest and Peter hits the invisible wall. Now this is a dome, right? and the walls are like electrocuted, like invisible fences. So he hits it and like gets hit back and his heart stops. And Katniss is like, oh, this man's about to die. So then Finnick is like, rut roll raggy. Why that reference? What the fuck is going on? And he has to give CPR to Mr. Sir. Why does this man continuously need saving? And yes, to reiterate my point from before, I remember how these movies end and how much he like, does for Katniss and how he's like the best person in the universe in the entire fucking galaxy. He still needs too much help in my opinion. Suzanne Collins won the Nobel Prize for Literature for Hunger Games Catching Fire. Now, I think that is true. They should do this on Survivor. This concept of the clock with the whoosh, do it on Survivor. Katniss soon realizes that there's like lightning striking and there's like big banging noises and there's 12 bolts of lightning and 12 banging noises. And she's like, hmm, that's crazy. Cue night time. They're all slumbering. She's on first watch. This little smoke comes down from the side and she's like, what's that then? And she touches it and it's poison gas. This is scary. I was shitting, right? She's like, everybody, yeah. And they're like, yeah. And she's like, move your body, yeah. The fuck is poisonous. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Focus. Magazines, Mags, sacrifices herself for Peter. And Peter and Katniss are like, that is weird. What is going on here? And they realize that like, if we go in the water, it all rubs off. So they go in the water and they're like, ah. And then while they turn around, there's a fucking monkey, a big monkey. And Katniss is like, oh, bitch, that's a big fucking monkey. And then Peter turns around and there's a monkey like ah, in his face. And if a monkey roared in my face, I think that would be it for me. Quick side note, the scene where they're like crawling to the water to get the poison off them. It reminded me of my time in hospitality in which I would do like a shift and I would smell like grease and meat. And then I would go home and be like, Get this shit off me. So yeah, these monkeys are like jumping and lunging at them and Katniss is like, and Phoenix is like, and then Peter's like, stab, stab, but really not doing much at all. And he is of course the weakest link, when is he not? And the monkeys are like getting up to him and he kind of like leans back against this tree and there's a face and you're like, who the fuck's that? Who that lady over there in the chair? She jumps out of her hiding spot and sacrifices herself for Peter. A few scenes later, Katniss, Peter and Finnegan are having sashimi on the beach. Next we meet Wyrus and Beatty. And Wyrus is like, TikTok, TikTok. She is in fact talking about the rise of TikTok five years after this movie came out. Wyrus and Beatty are only alive because Joanna saved them. And she says to Katniss, I got them out for you. And Katniss is like, bitch, what the fuck's going on here? Katniss hears like the lightning and she looks up, she looks around. She's like, what is that mysterious ticking noise? And then she realizes it's a clock. Such a good arena design. So fantastic. I love it. I love this fucking movie so much. I love the concept. I love the execution. They realize that there's a new threat every hour and it stays within the wedge. So they've had like four hours and it's been like poison gas, tsunami, evil monkeys and some other shit, right? Next thing you know, it's over for Wyrus. She's just been K-worded. It's crazy. There's just absolute fucking scenes everywhere. They don't give you time to breathe. At the start of this movie, they're like, mm, slow, 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 uprising, political commentary. And then you get to the actual event and there's like kill, 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 slay, slay, slay. And you're like, can I breathe? District one and two are there and the girls are absolutely fighting. You know, they're like throwing shit, they're all hitting each other, and the game makers, Plutarch Heavensby, is like, why don't we spin that shit? Turn it up, DJ, spin the track. And they spin the whole fucking thing. Oh, the budget. How much would it cost to make a Hunger Games? And I'm not asking because I want to make a Hunger Games. I'm asking because I'm just like, just, I respect the effort. So Katniss nearly dies, but she doesn't die. And that's important. Can you imagine if she did? 
I would actually kind of love that. Not because I want Katniss to die, but because I love it when TV shows like get rid of a main character, like in Game of Thrones, when the main character dies and you're like, um, so what now? And then a supporting character becomes the main character. Like, can you imagine if Katniss died and then Finnick became the main character? Yeah. So the next like event is this thing where there's screaming birds and the screaming birds sound like their loved ones screaming for them. And they're just so wrong for that. Beatty has a plan to electrocute the rest of the tributes that aren't in their group, right? And the plan is to wrap the lightning tree in coil and then run the coil to the water so that it electrocutes the water and that's where the other tributes will be and they'll all just get electrocuted. Katniss is with Joanna and the wire snaps as they're taking it to the water and then there's a bold man and then Joanna is like, it's clobbering time and whacks Katniss in the head and cuts open her arm and smears the blood so that she looks like she's been cut in the neck. Joanna, yeah, Joanna, Joanna. And she says to Katniss, stay down you crusty musty fool so they don't see you. And what does Katniss say? She says, absolutely not. I'm gonna get up. Next thing you know, Beatty's been electrocuted. Next thing you know, Finnick is telling Katniss, remember who the real enemy is. And Katniss is like, now wait a minute. Hamish told me that. She wraps an arrow with the coil and the lightning hits the tree, hits the coil. She shoots the arrow into the sky. Ah, I'm screaming at this point. And it electrocutes the whole fucking arena. The power goes out. Everyone's screaming and crying. Now Candace has been like electrocuted slash blown back from the tree. The arena has broken open. This ship comes down and scoops up Katniss. She's like, whoa, let me pass out real quick. She wakes up, she's on the ship. Who's next to her? Beatty, he's in pain. She walks through the door. Who's there? Hamish. Finnick and Plutarch Heavensby. Plutarch says to Katniss, this is the revolution and you are the Mockingjay. And she's like, okay, slay, but where's Peter? Hamish is like, he's in the capital. And she's like trying to attack Hamish, like you said you would protect him. So Plutarch gets this syringe and stabs her. She wakes up in District 13. Yes, 13. You thought there were 12 districts, but there's actually 13. 13 was destroyed, but she wakes up in District 13, what's that about? Gail's there and he's like, Katniss, there is no District 12 anymore. And she's like, oh my God, this is the worst day of my life, literally. The last scene in the movie, she's laying down. She's like confused. And then she's scared. And then she's angry. And then she's fierce. Best movie ever, best final scene ever. Now this movie is one of the few movies that I remember being in the cinema and watching it and just thinking, this is so fucking fantastic. Hunger Games Catching Fire, Iron Man 1, Meet the Robinsons. And obviously, of course, pfft, Avengers Infinity War. You may have noticed that I got increasingly animated throughout this video and I'm not gonna apologize for that. I feel so strongly about this movie. It's so fantastic. Like fucking hell, Suzanne Collins, bestie, you are bestie. Truly the bestie of the besties. But just like the scene where Sinner dies, she's in the test tube, she gets beam me up, scottied, comes out, she's in the white lotus, there's water, there's trees, there's people running, it's crazy. She's like, oh my God, the glare, my skin. And then when she's on the table, she's like, whoa, 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 angry. I felt it. I felt it. Jennifer Lawrence deserved so much for that. <sighs> okay. So yeah, that brings me to the end of my discussion and discourse for the Hunger Games full stop. I don't think I'm going to talk about the final parts because in my opinion, they should have just ended it after Hunger Games Catching Fire. If you have something to say about the Hunger Games Catching Fire, and you should, let's be real, you should have something to say. It's the best movie ever. Feel free to leave me a comment. Um, remember you are contractually obliged to like the video because I'm wearing a suit. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitch and the podcast and eh, 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 eh. Thank you all so much for sitting through me ranting about this movie and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace out, bye. Welcome to the end screen. Here you will find another video for you to watch and a link to easily subscribe to my channel. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Um, get a good lawyer.